Hi everyone, this video is looking at the structure of striated muscles. So in terms of the organisation of the muscle fibres, if you take a muscle, so here the muscle is attached to the bone each end, and if you look at that muscle, then it's actually made up of lots of bundles, and each of those bundles is made up of smaller bundles. And then if you look at a bundle in more detail, you'll see that it's made up of lots and lots of muscle fibers okay and these are the muscle cells so we call them muscle fibers and a muscle fiber is sort of a long cylindrical object and you can see here these stripes are the striations and the striations are there because of the uh, the protein filaments in our muscle fiber so let's have a look at this muscle fiber in more detail so here it is and here are the striations that you can see and if we cut away a section so we can see inside the fibre, remember this is basically looking inside the muscle cell, so that means that this outside um, area here, this outside line actually represents the cell surface membrane. And we have a particular name for it in muscles, we call it the sarcolemma. So within the sarcolemma, just as with any uh, other cell, you would have uh, cytoplasm, you've got nucleus, you've got mitochondria and other organelles, but most of the internal space is taken up with structures called myofibrils. And myofibrils are just made of proteins, made of protein filaments. So these myofibrils, again, so they're long, uh, sort of cylindrical objects, and they are packed throughout the whole of the muscle fibre. Those other cell organelles are just sort of packed and wedged around the myofibrils. So there's a nucleus. Muscle fibres are quite unique because they have more than one nucleus. So here we've got two. So we call them multinucleate cells. And uh, we can see some mitochondria sort of wedged in between the myofibrils. And if we have a look at one of these myofibrils, just take the uh, sort of a look at this transverse cross section of the myofibril, then what we can see are the protein filaments inside. So these are the thick filaments, which is myosin. Okay, so myosin is the name of the protein. And then we have the thin filaments, and they are the actin filaments. So the myofibril is made of those two protein filaments in particular arrangement. So again, here's our myofibril. So remember, lots of myofibrils in a muscle fibre. So here you can see the myosin filaments. And of course, you know, they extend throughout and they come out. So just to sort of try and show that as three-dimensional. So they've got the myosin filaments and then going back the other way. And then here we've got the actin filaments. Again, sort of showing them as three-dimensional uh, protein filaments. Uh, so you end up with that that yeah that's what the myofibril is there's nothing surrounding it it's just all of those protein filaments all arranged together to make our myofibril okay so if we think about those filaments so here we can see fil the filaments here these are the actin filaments and we just have to look at the arrangement of them um, as a sort of two-dimensional picture so these are actin filaments and there we have myosin filaments, and you can see uh, that they're overlapping. So this would be spreading out so that the myofibril is going all the way along here. Then we have more actin, more myosin, more actin. So this is our myofibril. You can see that there are some areas where there is only actin. There are some areas where there's only myosin. And then there are some areas where there is actin and myosin overlapping. This line here is called the Z line, and this is where you find uh, a different kind of protein. We don't need to know the name, but different proteins which help to attach the actin filaments and keep them in place. And the Z line is important because the distance from one Z line to the next Z line is known as a sarcomere. And sarcomere 
is um, a, a distance that allows us to see the length of a muscle. So whether the sarcomere is longer or shorter um, is determined by whether the muscle is contracted or relaxed. So what you can see here is that same myofibril in a contracted state. So if we just have a look, um, if you just focus on this myosin filament here, and I'm going to go back to the relaxed state. And if you focus on that myosin filament, you can see that in this picture here, the myosin filament is not moving. So relaxed, contracted, relaxed, contracted. So when a muscle contracts, the actin filaments actually slide across the myosin. So what you can see here, if we think about the length of this sarcomere, so from the Z line to the Z line, look at the length here in the contracted muscle, and there's relaxed. So you can see that as we go from relaxed to contracted, the sarcomere gets shorter. Relaxed, contracted. The length of the myosin filament has not changed. The length of the actin filaments has not changed. They have just um, they just slide across one another so that the distance between the two Z lines gets shorter. So relaxed, distance between Z lines is longer, the sarcomere is longer. Contracted, the distance between the Z lines is shorter, the sarcomere is shorter. Uh, I've also shown on here the M line so the M line is a bit like the Z line. Um, it's this area down the middle where you would find proteins which hold the myosin uh, filaments in place. But you often actually don't draw the line. But that's where it is. That's what it means. OK, so we'll go back to our relaxed uh, muscle, our relaxed myofibril. And now we're going to look at this section here, which is the I band. So this is where you only have actin. It's also known as the light band. So when you look at the muscle, because there's only actin and actin is the thinner filament, this area would look lighter. So there's one eye band and there's another eye band and we'd be able to identify these all the way along the myofibril. So this is relaxed. And they have just shaded it in to make it a little bit more obvious. Contracted. So when the actin slides across the myosin, the distance, um, which is only actin, gets smaller. So the I band gets smaller. So the myosin filaments are basically closer together. Relaxed. Longer I bands. Contracted. Shorter I bands. This part is called the H zone. So this is where you only have myosin. And this part here is the A band. So the A band is actually going from the one end of myosin across to the other end of the myosin. So the A band is basically the same as the length of the myosin filament. So if the myosin filaments don't change length, then the A band should also not change length. So here it is in its relaxed state, and then it contracts. So if we flip between the two, you should be able to see that the A band stays the same, because of course the myosin filament itself doesn't get any longer or shorter. However, the H zone you can see, so there's relaxed, the H zone gets shorter, because the, uh, again, the actin filaments are sliding across, so the uh, there is less um, there's less area where we only have myosin. Relaxed, contracted, the H zone gets shorter. Okay, so if we just sort of compare those different sections um, side by side, so up here we've got our relaxed muscle or relaxed myofibril, and here we've got our contracted myofibril, um, and you can see here the comparison of the sarcomere, so going from Z line to Z line, the sarcomere is much longer in the relaxed state and shorter in the contracted state. Here's our H zone, so where we only have myosin, and you can see it's shorter in the contracted state. 
there's our A band. So that's the, um, the length of the myosin. And you can see that it doesn't change. It's the same in both contracted and relaxed states. And then finally, the I band, which is where you only have actin, is longer in relaxed and shorter in the contracted state. Okay, that's all. Thank you.